I am Leilani Michelle Jones, she, her, Executive Director of Health Equity for the County of Santa Clara. We cannot start this event without taking a moment to recognize all of those that have truly dedicated their work and themselves to the community that we serve and extend gratitude and celebration to all of our Latin A physicians that we're celebrating every day, but a little extra on this second annual National Latin A Physician Day. Thank you to Supervisor Chavez for her leadership in bringing this proclamation to her county and her staff for being here with us today. Nationally, the Latin A population is just under 20%, yet only around 6% of our physicians are Latin A. Representation matters. The impact of having a doctor that looks like you, speaks the same language as you, understands you and your community is immeasurable. Having a doctor that reflects your community and culture is an evidence-based strategy to improve outcomes for marginalized underserved populations. However, due to systemic barriers that disproportionately impact communities of color, the path to becoming a doctor is not an even playing field. Our goal at Santa Clara Valley Healthcare is not just to ensure that there's a possibility that our Latin A children grow up to be, to be doctors. Our Latin A community shouldn't have to get lucky in order to serve their community. We are lucky to have them serving our community. We need them serving our community, and they deserve every ounce of celebration and commitment to expanding the pipeline for future generations to come. Equity should not and cannot be left to fate. As a country and as a county, we need to take the extra step to ensure that we're driving change. We know that this is not going to be resolved through a short-term initiative, but rather this requires a long-standing long commitment to investing in our children, in our youth, and in our county so that they are able to become our future physicians. As a system, we're actively engaged in targeted recruitment efforts, and yet we know that we've just scratched the surface and there's much more work to do to close the gap. And we also know it's not just about bringing in Latin A physicians, but ensuring that this is a county and a health system where Latin A physicians feel safe, feel happy, and a true sense of belonging. The Office for Health Equity and Improvement is just getting started, and we're excited to be here, and we're committed to making sure this is a new day in Santa Clara Valley Healthcare history. Santa Clara Valley Healthcare is eager to partner with our Latin A physicians, our county staff, and our communities to co-design a more equitable healthcare landscape for our patients in our county. Thank you and welcome Dr. Angela Suarez, Primary Care Medical Director for Santa Clara Valley Healthcare. Thank you, Leilani. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Angela Suarez, the Primary Care Medical Director for Santa Clara Valley Healthcare. I am honored to speak to you all here today on National Latino Physician Day and raise awareness about the urgent need to increase the number of Latino physicians in our county and nation. After nearly 30 years of practicing medicine at Santa Clara Valley Healthcare, this day is long overdue. Each Latino physician has a unique story of how they achieved their goal. Personally, I was born and raised in San Jose and attended public health schools here, public schools here. During my freshman year at San Jose High School, I met a friend who was a candy striper at San Jose Medical Center who encouraged me to join her. This was my first exposure to healthcare and this chance opportunity enabled me to envision becoming a physician. By the time I graduated high school, I knew I wanted to practice primary care in a neighborhood similar to the one I grew up in. I am grateful that I was able to return to San Jose and Santa Clara Valley Healthcare after medical school, and for the past 25 years, I have been a primary care physician at Valley Health Center East Valley Clinic, which is just one and a half miles from my high school. I consider myself fortunate to have had the opportunity that led me to the field of medicine. However, our Latino communities and the individuals within them should not have to rely on luck to pursue a career in medicine. Our healthcare systems should make a concerted effort to provide early opportunities for volunteering, interning, and working within our health system to the communities we serve. We must invest in the pipeline from grade school to ensure a more diverse landscape for the next generation of physicians, ensuring that they are representative of the population they will serve. After practicing medicine for many years, I am disheartened to see that the, statis the statistics for Latino physicians have not significantly improved since I started. 
Statistics are numbers, but here's a real example. When I started medical school in 1988, I was one of five Latinas in the class of about 120 students. And while the number of women in most medical school classes is now about 50%, last year my daughter started medical school and she is one of only four Latinas in her class of 110 students. My hope is that with awareness days like this and initiatives that provide opportunities for middle and high school students, we can begin to make significant strides in increasing our numbers. As our Latino community continues to grow, this is imperative. Thank you. I'd like to uh, introduce Dr. Rachel Ruiz now. Gracias, Dr. Suarez. So on behalf of the Valley Physicians Group, I am honored to be here with you all today to not only celebrate National Latino Physician Day, but to also bring more awareness. Research tells us time and time again that communities of color are disproportionately affected by poor health outcomes compared to their white counterparts. Research also tells us that patients are more satisfied and have better health outcomes when their doctors look like them. Well, as you may have guessed, by now, we have our work cut out for us. While 20% of our population in Santa Clara County identifies as Latine, the overwhelming majority of our patients here in this hospital, more than 50%, are that we are honored to serve day in and day out identify as Latine. Yet only about 5% of our physicians do. We can do better. We must do better. Unfortunately, this isn't a county specific problem, nor is it a state specific problem. This problem is nationwide. Yet at our current rate, one study suggested that it will take the state of California 500 years to address this, this disparity in reach parity. 500 years. We need action at every level top up and uh, from top down and bottom up. This also means that we need, to take, we need to take a critical look at how we are treating and retaining our very own Latina physicians here um, in our system and how we are supporting them during recruitment efforts. The Valley Physicians Group pledges to be part of the solution. And the great news is that we can, st we can start ahora, right now in our own backyards. Within two miles of where we are standing here today, there is an elementary school, there is a middle school, there is a high school, there is a community college we can all see right now. By rebuilding the pipeline to medicine, and um, we can simultaneously address the Latina physician shortage and improve health outcomes among our largest patient population. Si se puede, yes we can. Thank you. Good afternoon, buenas tardes. My name is Hugo Mora Torres. I am here representing, uh, my, uh, he, him, his are my pronouns. I'm here representing the advisors uh, for pre-med students, and I'm especially working for UC Berkeley. Um, but I'm also representing the perspectives of a small but dedicated cadre of advisors nationwide who I meet with every two years as a member of the National Association advisors for the health professions. We, we meet every two years for uh, professional development conferences. And uh, the small cadre has similar perspectives as our, our, our uh, physicians here have. We need to rebuild the pipeline. We're doing as best we can uh, at, at our individual job sites, but we need help. We need help from them. They're already doing as much as they can, but we need help from the people in leadership, uh, the UC chancellor, the CSU chancellor, the uh, uh, California, California Community College Chancellor uh, to hold their advisors and the advising system accountable so that they could provide higher level uh, and more and better trained uh, pre-med advisors. I, I think of myself as a dream enabler. In other words, we have a lot of students who are out there and they're getting um, what I call um, 
transactional advising. Most advisors say, here's a course you need to take for next semester. If you have any questions, see the website, in and out of the door by in five or 10 minutes. Our, our students who come from these underserved communities need more than that. They need aspirational advisor. They need cultural wealth recognition. They need uh, uh, people like myself and my colleagues who are gonna do what we call a, a series of um, activities to build self-efficacy. And I guess one of the best examples I can give you is, uh, besides all these wonderful stories that they've shared is, this past weekend, um, one of my students who's now at UC, UCLA School of Medicine, his mentor threw out the, the first pitch at Dodger Stadium. Dr. Gerardo Moreno uh, is now uh, part of the admissions committee at UCLA. He's got an MPH, does a lot of studies, uh, population-based studies. And um, I met him when I was advising at San Jose State, and I saw this homey-looking dude with khakis and a white shirt, very nicely ironed, and he had his stripes, he thought so. And I said, he looked kind of lost, so I said, you know, can I help you? Not like, can I help you, which is what many people ask when somebody, somebody like that coming on campus, is, can I help you? And so, yeah, I'm looking for the chemistry department. So I, sh you know, I have class there. Okay, so I walk with him. And meanwhile, I'm talking to him and getting more information from him. And I started pre-med advising with him. That summer, he got a, a summer job at a community health center and shadowed a physician, Latino physician, in Merced, California, where he was from. And like uh, Dr. Suarez, he had a, 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 a serendipity moment. Like, this is what I need to be doing. This is where my parents are gonna get healthcare services. This is where my, where my, my cousins, my nephews are gonna get healthcare services and they deserve the best. So from there on, he committed to pre-med. Uh, he sold his lowrider Chevy. Yeah, because he's focused on being an, a, a student. And you know, 25 years later, he's throwing the first pitch at Dyer Stadium being recognized for all the good work that he's done in admissions and, and the health. We, we have a thousand stories like that at City College, at San Jose State, at San Francisco State, at UC Berkeley, but we're losing them. We're bleeding talent. And, and this is what happens when we stop the bleeding. When we apply a tourniquet, and that's immediate, but we also apply a solution to stop the bleeding that's long-term systemic, where there's accountability built in. So I'm asking people with white coats, people with retired white coats, to lobby with the people in power and ask them to prioritize uh, within their systems to build the pipeline, rebuild the pipeline and hold people accountable because there's money out there. It's just not well coordinated, it's not well spent. Uh, we need more of it, obviously. But everybody's saying, you know, we have budget issues, we can't do this, we can't do that. But so I'm saying, let's do better with what we do have. And then once we build that success, that's going to open up the doors for future grant funding, future money from the federal government, show that we know what we're doing. So, um, so anyways. There's many more stories like that. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to have served students like yourself for the last 25 years. Um, prior to me starting, there was a whole cadre of people, and this book is uh, pulled out by uh, Ultimate Hospital System in LA, that documents uh, 20 years of building the infrastructure that resulted in these students being where they're at right now, or these medical, these physicians being where they're at right now. So they're now, pushing us and encouraging us as a society to stand on the shoulders of these people, to stand on the shoulders of, of these people and, and create a, a pipeline that produce better results. Thank you very much for your time. Welcome everyone to National Latino Physician Day. Let's go, vamos. My name is Dr. Cesar Padilla. I like to say I'm locally raised in the East Bay, I'm organic to the Bay Area. Uh, my parents are uh, came from Mexico in the 1970s and looking back and reflecting on my story, I am the product of the Cesar Chavez movement. That's who I am, that's my DNA and identity. That's how I wanna start the story. I was raised in a working class environment in the East Bay, Union City. And it was tough. There was gang stuff around. There was just a lot of societal pressures. Almost dropped out of high school, but made it to community college and found my way to med school, and now I am here. So I'm currently at Stanford, and I wanna share with you, you know, the reasons why it was hard. These are all social determinants of health. These are all social determinants, structural problems. Dr. Michael Galvez, who is the founder, 
reached out to me last year, literally three months before October 1st last year. He's a pediatric and plastic hand surgeon, the only Latino with that subspecialty training in the state of California, probably nationally. And he had this idea. He said, hey, what if we start a day to celebrate Latino physicians while also recognizing the urgency for more Latino physicians? And I said, yeah, I was like, yeah, sure. It was leap of faith. And lo and behold, here we are today. And that just really fills my heart with joy because we have over 80 sponsoring organizations. This is national. On October 1st, you're gonna see cities all over the country celebrating. And I heard a theme earlier about sort of applying pressure. There are specific things that National Latino Physician Day is advocating for. We are done being passive. This is a physician shortage crisis. We heard this, the uh, earlier, uh, someone said that it would take 500 years for there to be adequate representation of Latino physicians. If we were to double the amount of Latino medical students, it would take 92 years to reach an adequate representation. So what needs to happen? This is where our legislative allies come in. We need guaranteed admissions from community college pathways. Guaranteed. There's no other way around it. And how about this? Bilingual skills. Bilingual skills. Let me ask you all, bilingual skills or three research papers? What's going to make a difference in someone's care? Language. Boom. Ahí estamos. Exactly. Language. We know that. We know the evidence supports it. Time. And even when you have a physician that speaks Spanish, it's superior to a tr an interpreter. Not putting down interpreters at all, but it's superior. It's better. There's better healthcare outcomes when you have a physician that speaks the language. And so I really want to highlight the importance of community college. It was literally my backbone. It was literally the, the societal infrastructure that helped me move forward. But we need guaranteed pathways because when these medical students get to the medical school admissions or when they're, they're applying to medical school, I'm sorry, and they have a history of community college, there's a bias against community college students. So we need guaranteed pathways. Bilingual skills for admissions as well. Why not make a medical school class 50% 50% should have um, bilingual skills based off what people speak in California. And really just ending, I want to state that, you know, this is really about our patients. You know, I go to, I work as an obstetric anesthesiologist. I put epidurals and spinals in, keep p patients safe during the delivery process. And let me tell you, patients are afraid. And I suspect there's a large undocumented patient population as well. They are afraid. We need modules for physicians on this. We need to help the undocumented community. We need to raise awareness, but we need guaranteed pathways. Porque ya basta, ya basta, como decía Cesar Chavez, it is done. Like we need to move with pressure. We need to move with legislative force. And I wanna end with one thought. Think about the societal and ethical obligations that hospitals and medical students have or medical schools have to their surrounding environments. So I go to work every day and I'm willing to bet quantify the number of janitorial staff that are Latino in descent, does that reflect in the physician workforce? So what I tell pre-med students is, if you see janitors, custodial staff that are Latino, Latina, think about this. If we're good enough to clean the call rooms, cook the food, get the hospital ready, then we're good enough to treat patients. Muchas gracias. Feliz Día Nacional del Médico Latino y para adelante. And thank you, Santa Clara um, Valley. This is amazing. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Mike Medina. I'm with uh, Office of Supervisor Cindy Chavez, District 2. And I just want to just echo what Cesar um, just mentioned is um, with my story uh, when I was growing up, I was also helping interpreting and translating uh, documents for my parents about um, uh, vacunas of vaccines, everything like that. And it, it, it was it was difficult, but now seeing more of Latinos um, and in the medical profession, it really inspires, it really touches my heart. Just knowing that um, they're doing it for the undocumented uh, folks, non-English speaking folks. And um, with that, I just want to uh, provide a, um, a Board of Supervisor proclamation uh, to whoever wants to receive it. See, see there? <laughs> uh, from the County Board of Supervisors.
Thank you, everybody. My name is Stephen Ngo. I'm on here on behalf of Mayor Mahan's office and on behalf of the City Council. I want to also issue a proclamation recognizing National Latino Physician Day um, and just keep on the message of 6% is not enough and we need many more in the field of medicine. So thank you very much for this rally and here's to many more until we reach those numbers. Thank you so much to everyone for joining us today and one last round of applause for our Latin A physicians. Thank you.